So I'm gonna show y'all how to customize a wig step by step. These are the products you're gonna use. Your bleach, for the developer, mixing bowl, ebon spray, your comb, and of course, your wig, okay? That's what you're gonna need. And we gonna get it started. So. We're gonna spray the ebb and spray on the lace, like on the edges. And then we're gonna comb it so the hairs can be like stand up so that when you bleach the knots, the edges are not getting caught in the bleach and getting super over bleach. Super important. Damn, you know what I just thought? I don't have, mm, I do have brown actually. I do. This is what I do. You don't have to do this, but I like to do this. So then it's gonna look like this. Can y'all see? <laughs> One scoop, put it in our bowl. Then we're going to take our developer. We're going to put it in the bowl, but we don't want to put too much. We just want to kind of mix it. First, mix it up to see what the consistency comes out to. And then once we mix it up, because I know some people say they want it kind of I like mine to be a little thick and then I push it in because what I've noticed is when it's too light, they say it should be the consistency of toothpaste, but every time it's the goddamn consistency of toothpaste, for, ooh, I just put too much, wow. Every time it's the consistency of toothpaste for me, it still over bleaches. So I just be over there stressed out. Like I over bleach the knots every single time. There's not a time that I do not over bleach. But I just do a lot of extra work to correct my over bleaching. <laughs> Honestly. Honestly. So I'm just going to add more bleach because it's way too watery. I like mine thick, like I said. So I'm mixing it up. I hope y'all can see through this camera because I really need it like this. Oof. Strong. I still feel like this is watery. I'm going to add more bleach, even though the average person would enjoy that, not me. That would stress me the hell out. So I'm adding more bleach. Here we go. Okay, I like this consistency. It's a little thicker. All right, so now I'm going to get started with bleaching the knots. So, boy, chocolate, what I do is, ooh, I'll go in, and I just like to get the bottom part first. So, I'll go in, get all the bottom, get all of that done. So I can focus on the top. Mm. To be honest, with some of these color four wigs like this one, you really don't gotta bleach the knots. If the person's dark skin, Low key, it don't matter what skin they are. You really don't have to bleach the knots. I'm just doing a little extra right now. I don't know why I'm doing extra. I guess for a YouTube video. Because I'm about to leave this shit on for five minutes. Because <laughs> it's going to lift very quick because the hair is already light brown. All right, so now that I've done 
most of that. Let me get these sides. Okay, now I'm gonna bring it to the front. Let me stop the video and start this. Now, this is how I bleach the mats in the front. I go really slow and I don't push it in really hard. I just kind of want it to touch the knots a little, little, little bit. So like this. So I'll go in and I won't even push it in. I'm just gonna glide it up. Ah! That's the downfall of me using thicker bleach. It's harder for me to, um. it's harder for the bleach to stick, but I'd rather use thicker bleach than goddamn bleach just running all through the damn lace. So you, you gotta push it in a little smidgy. Just a smidgy, there we go. You see how it's barely touching the knots? Y'all can't see, but I know my camera's pretty good, so let me give y'all a little, little look. It's barely touching the knots, y'all. So I'm gonna just do it like this. And I don't push it in because I do not want it to like over bleach. I'm barely getting it in there. And then whatever spots I missed. If I miss a spot, what I'll do, I'll dip my brush back into the bleach and put it on the tip of the brush like this so that I can have enough to make sure I get it good. Yeah. Okay, I'm not doing that again. Because sometimes if you keep going over the same spot, it's definitely hands down gonna over bleach. So let me get this side. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I am not a professional bleacher. <laughs> I'm just showing y'all what I know. Or showing y'all in real time what I would do. But let me hurry up, because like I said, I'm leaving this on for five minutes. I'm goddamn running out of bleach. Okay, I got a couple sides. I refuse to make more bleach, so we just got to make this work, honey. We have to make it work. Okay. Hate bleaching knots. Hate, hate, hate it. Another thing you could do while it's sitting, kind of pull the hairs upwards even more just to make sure that that hair is not sitting in the bleach and over bleaching. Because I'm telling y'all, it will over bleach with ease. You would think you're just doing a phenomenal job and you rinse that shit out and it's over bleached and you're pissed. But what I do almost every time, because I have a whole process, um, I'll have some hair dye. What I'll do when I wash, I'll show y'all. I don't even got to do all that explaining. But yeah, I like to pull the hairs out. So I'm... This is going to be one of my best YouTube videos. Simply because I'm using my iPhone. And I could do a... I normally use my camera, but the problem is... Uh, I really don't know how to edit with that 
I mean, I guess I could. Let me not make excuses. We're gonna wash it out now. Wash out all the bleach. Damn. So, we washed it out. So you don't see too many, um, the knots are lighter. How about that? <laughs> That's all I would tell you. But I know for a fact, it's slightly over bleach. No biggie. So now, let me saturate the wig one more time. And then I'm gonna get my purple shampoo. And I'm going to put it on the whole entire wig because, again, this wig is blonde. So, I just want to tone that brassiness out. It's super brassy. And I see this color, this 427. I see it all over TikTok. I see it all over social media. And I don't know why y'all be wearing y'all wigs and they be so brassy. It's so annoying it just shows who really knows about hair and who really doesn't it's so annoying like go tone your wig especially when y'all wear them 613 see how the, how it's toned down it's already toned down you could tell it was so brassy at first Let me make y'all look closer um y'all be wearing them 613 wigs and they be looking so yellow like please be for real I like this, this looks great. This looks great. I don't know if y'all could tell, but it definitely toned. You can see it from the camera. It does not look as orange as it initially did. So please tone your wigs and just stop wearing them out of the box. Like, I'm so tired of that. <laughs> but I know it's just people that don't know better. You can't do better if you don't know better. I know that for a fact. It's about to be annoy, annoy me. Okay. So I'm just going to put this on here. Just a little bit because I need it for the next week. <laughs> put that on there. And a secret weapon is... Actually, I'm scared to use this because I'm not going to use this. Because I got highlights and I don't want it to turn the highlights another color. So, Conditioner. So I'm just going to do conditioner and that clear. I'm just using the conditioner that come with the damn color box because I have so many of these. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to mix this together. Let it sit. Can we talk about colors, baby? Hmm, wear your natural hair. Ooh, child, I could talk about that all day. Because y'all don't even want the bitches that got 4C hair to really wear their natural hair anyways. You ain't talking about the 4C girls. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about that. You're definitely not talking about the 4C girls. The 4C girls don't get love. We have to love ourselves. <laughs> Literally. Okay, so now that I have the conditioner saturated in the wig. And y'all can literally do this at home with y'all wigs that y'all buy, honestly. Honestly, so now I do want to make sure that conditioner gets to the front as well. All right. So... I'm going to spray this on the lace because I'm about to add some color. And I don't want the lace to get colored. So here's the hair dye. So I'm just going to get a little bit at a time. Ooh, this is so risky. So you got to be somebody who's not clumsy as hell, okay? So what I'm going to do... 
eesh, eesh. Hold up. Let me make sure this ain't too dark. First of all. Hmm. Oh no. It might not be. Oh Lord. Please don't be too dark. Please. I don't know. Ah, it's kind of giving brown. Cause I feel like I used, I did, I used this to do a brown wig. You know, it's always gonna be darker when it's wet. Oh Lord, we are just going to say a wing and a prayer. I'll put this in here, cause I need it to be light. Ah, I need to be able to just kind of grab it. Not too much, because you do not want it to fall. And you have to gently comb it in. Gently comb it in. If you comb it too deep, you're going to recolor those knots. Now, yeah, this is a lot of work, but <laughs> until you master bleaching the knots, ah, then, baby girl, this is what you're going to have to do. Or your client's going to look bald-headed. This works for me. Again, I'm okay with doing this extra step. I mean, I'd rather not, but the results are always amazing. And the reason why I do this right here, where I'm kind of shaking it in there, is because I want it to get to the roots without me digging too deep. Oh, Lord, I done put too much. Ah! Oof, that was a close one. That was almost too much. Yeesh. It really doesn't matter on the sides, especially if she not get, she's not getting baby hairs, so it don't matter too much Eesh. on these sides, but I'll just get them just in case. All right, y'all, now let's get into it. So we're going to flatten the lace, and these are the three things we need to use. You can get this comb from my website. You can get the wax stick from It's Sticky. I will put the link below, and you could just use Ebon Spray spritz or just some hairspray to kind of seal the deal so if you want to do a middle part make sure that you align your frontal or your closure onto your mannequin head that that line that's in the middle of the mannequin head make sure your wig is equally like poop placed right in the middle of that because if your wig is not like equally placed on your mannequin head your middle part's not going to be accurate so be very mindful of that the same amount of lace needs to be on both sides so be super mindful of that and you will get a middle part so first we're going to put our wax stick then we're going to spray then we're going to use our hot comb to flatten it make sure you use the back of your hot comb to really press into that lace these are not things you could do on your client's head so before you do an install make sure you flatten the lace on the mannequin head so you can really push that hot comb deep into the roots See, I'm doing the same thing. And it's very important, do not spray too much hairspray, especially if you're using Ebon Spray, because Ebon Spray gets so stuck. It gets so stuck that when you're trying to put the hot comb through it, the hot comb can jam. And, and I've burned myself just due, due to the hot comb jamming and like really quickly, like just jamming and running it into my hand. So just be super mindful of that, y'all. 
Um, when I do my middle part, like when I first do my middle part, I don't trip on it being perfect. Once I hot comb everything down, your middle part will be way more clear. So don't spend one hour trying to get that middle part so you can flatten the lace. Go ahead and flatten the lace and then fix that middle part after. I do that all the time and sometimes it's cocked to the side. So I just don't stress myself out. I just flatten it and check back later. So as you can see, don't push your lace back too far. I notice that some people use that hot comb and they push the lace back like two inches. Don't do that. All you need is a, a little swoop in the front and keep it pushing because when you do your curls and stuff, you don't want that hair pushed back two whole inches. It's going to look crazy. So be mindful of that. Oh my God, this wig is so cute. Of course, when you do your T part in the back, you just cut a straight line. Boom, boom, boom. You want to hot comb that back hair. Literally what I'm doing in there is what you're going to do. Now we're going to get into the layers. I had already cut one side of layers for my TikTok. Sorry, guys. So I'm going to cut this side. I got my scissors from Sally's. I got the really colorful ones. If you go to Sally's, it's the only pair of colorful scissors they have. Make sure both of your um, front pieces are aligned, your face framers. It's always hard for me to make mine align, so bear with me, y'all. It's not a day that I ever not have to like go back and recut the layers. Like Layers, I'm still learning. I'm not 100% a professional. I did not go to cosmetology school, baby. Everything I learned was off the girls on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, okay? look. <laughs> so that's why I'm trying to teach y'all what I know, because at least my stuff looks really good. So I cut layers all around my wig. Um, I can't really necessarily explain to you what I'm doing. You would just have to watch what I'm doing, honestly. <sighs> y'all, I'm so tired, but I was like, let me get this voiceover for y'all, because none of my videos have voiceovers, and I just have a really good feeling about this video. I said, I need to do a voiceover, because I think this will just turn it up a little bit, Okay. Now, the reason why I do layers all the way around is because it makes the curls just look better. I notice when I only do layers in the front, the back ends up looking really bulky and the curls don't last in the back. You cut layers because you want the curl, you don't want the curls to be so, you don't want too much hair to be curled because it's going to be heavy and the curls are going to drop. They're not going to bounce and you just have to cut layers i mean i don't i don't know what to tell you that's just science <laughs> it's science to um curls curls need layers it helps feed them it nourishes them <laughs> and layers look the no and curls look the best on shorter units so a unit that's 26 inches and short and shorter is gonna eat the curls up anything longer than 26 inches just be looking the curls don't last so that's just word to the wise okay word to the wise so I really chop layers off because my wigs are super thick. You see, I done cut all this hair off and this wig is still heavy, okay? My wigs are not thin. I don't I don't sell these $700 thin wigs. Like, that's crazy. I don't see why people do that. I install other companies' wigs. Sometimes I'm like, bruh, this wig is so thin. Like, please be for real. Like, my wigs are 200 density minimum, okay? Three bundles minimum, okay? So let's get with it. So I'm almost done cutting these layers. Like I said, I cut layers all the way around. If you want a better video on how to cut layers, just YouTube it, search it, and just see what, you know what I'm saying, a lot of stylists are doing. I'm not really comfortable with just focusing on teaching y'all how to cut layers because I just know I'm kind of winging it. <laughs> so, um, yeah, if I when I get better, then I'll be able to like be confident and be like, okay, here is a video strictly for layers, but I'm not that confident, okay? Now, I always trim the ends on my wigs because they're always scraggly. This wig, the ends weren't really scraggly, but I just wanted a clean, I just want a clean end, so I went ahead and, um, higher, y'all. I went ahead and cut the ends anyway, just to make it a little cleaner. Yeah, because like I said, most of the time, these wigs come with the splittest of split ends. They be so thin at the bottom, it's so annoying, so... It's just good to clean it. And I also feel like when you clean the ends, the curls don't get as tangled because the ends are like clean. But I don't know, that's just me. So we're gonna use our silkening serum. You can really use any serum as long as it gets the job done. I know BioSilk is really good. Design Essentials is really good. I use Fantasia, okay? Because it, it does the job for me, okay? So saturate that all through the hair. Be mindful, don't. You don't want it to be super greasy in one spot. So when you put it on, you got to really make sure you're not just using it in one spot and it's too, like, oily, okay? So just be super mindful of that. 
My wigs are full, so I can use a nice amount. Um, this heat protecting spray, I got that from Sally's. Sally's always has specials, y'all. Do not sleep on Sally's. Sally's sometimes has specials on that spray. You can get like four for $25, and one of them is like, now it's $15. I was like, when did the price go up like that? What the hell? They talking about, because we sell out so much, you know. I don't give a damn. Why is it so high? It used to be like $8. Jeez. Okay, let's get into the curling. So I like to flat iron the top of my hair that's on um, when, before I curl it because I just want it to be cleaner. Sometimes the blow dry doesn't just get it that clean. Okay, so I always pin my curls. This hairspray I also got from Sally's and it's also on sale a lot of the time. It's Sebastian Shaper Spray, but it's a generic brand. It works exactly like the original. Please don't sleep. Please don't sleep. Please don't sleep. Okay. Now we're going to get into the curling for real. So when I curl, when I'm on the left side of the, no, I'm on the right side. So I'm in the back of the head, right? On the right side. So this is how I'm going to curl. The barrel will always be pointed in this direction. Like the tip of the barrel will always be pointed in that direction. But the actual curling direction that I'm going to, you see the tip of the hair? The tip of the hair is on the right side of the curling iron. So whatever side of the curling iron that you're on, the tail of the hair needs to be on that side. So the tail of the hair is on the right side of the curling iron and I'm on the right side of the curling iron. But the curling iron itself will always be facing this direction no matter what side you're on. I know I just said a handful, but I really hope you understand. Oh gosh, I know I said a handful. Oh my goodness. I didn't even understand what I said. <laughs> Oh, let's see if I can do it again. Sure. Let's see if I can explain it again. Because I know it's super, it sounds complicated, y'all, but it's so easy. And once you learn it, you will change the trajectory of your wig business for real. Like, honestly. So we're going to spray our heat protectant. And again, because you're curling, it's good to like use that product. Don't be scared to use that product. You need to use it. Because we're curling and we don't want a whole bunch of flyaways. We don't want the hair to look dry. None of that. Okay. Comb that in, hot comb the top because, of course, I want a clean, sleek look at the top. And you can really stop the flat iron boot in the middle, but sometimes I'll be doing too much and I'll come down. All right, curling iron time. So the curling iron will, all, the tip of the curling iron will always be on that side. The tail of the hair is on the right side of the curling iron since we're on the right side of the wig in the back, okay? So if you're on the right side and the tail is not on the right side of the curling iron, you're curling in the wrong direction. If the tail of your hair is poking out of the left side of that curling iron, but you're on the right side in the back, you're curling in the wrong direction, okay? So just remember it like that. The tail of the hair needs to come out on the side of the wig that you're on. So the tail of the hair, if you're on the right side of the wig, the tail of the hair needs to be poking out the right side. Oh my gosh, I hope that makes sense. When we do the other side, you're gonna understand, okay? Because the tail of the hair needs to be poking out the left side, but the curling iron itself will still be in the same position. The curling iron position does not change. It never changes. It's the hair. It's the, it's the tail of the hair. The direction that you put the hair is what changes, okay? So again, boom, put in the curling iron, the tail of the hair is on the right side of the curling iron. Why? Because we are on the right side of the wig, okay? And that's, a, that's the direction all the curls on this side need to be at all times in order for you to have a productive comb out and just, you know, in order for your wig to look really nice in the end. The direction of the curls is super important. Now, there are several different techniques to this, but this is my technique, okay? I don't need people telling me, oh, you should curl this way. I'm curling this way, and this is what I'm teaching people. So, <laughs> zip it up. I don't want to hurry. it. I don't want to hurry. it. And also, when I pin my curls, I pin them. I put the pin in them upside down. I don't put it regularly. I don't know why. Somebody taught me that. Anyways. And I don't put the pin on top of the hair. I kind of put it on the inside because I don't want creases on my curls. I might have to see. Boom. On the right side, the tail of the hair is coming out the right side because I'm still on the right side. Okay. So I just want y'all to understand this. I try to put the phone in front of me on my tripod so that y'all can like see it from a bird's eye view. Like see it as though you were doing it. You see how I put the pin in there? You don't see that pin on the top of that curl. It's inside. So just be mindful of that. 
Boom. We're curling, curling, curling. Doo -dee -doo -dee -doo. And then when you drop your curl, make sure you drop it in your hand. Try not to just drop the curl because we don't want the curls to fall. Okay, look at how I'm pinning this curl. Boom. You see how I'm putting it inside the hair and not on top? All right, so now we're on the left side. I like to set section my front and back. I just like to do that because I like to have some. I just like things to be organized, okay? All right, so boom. Spray it with our heat protectant spray. Comb it through real good. We're gonna flat iron the top because I just like it to look real clean. You know, you want it to look clean and straight. Again, you don't have to make that curling iron go all the way down the hair. Just to like, you know, the middle is good. You don't gotta do too much. So now we curl. So remember, oh God. I think I cut, oh my God, y'all. Did I cut that out of the video? That's crazy. Oh my God, I feel so crazy because we was really about to get into it. Damn, okay. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> oh my God, did something get cut out of this video? Anyway, so we're still, technically we're still on the right side of the wig, we're just in the front. So it's the same thing. Y'all see the tail of that hair? It's still on the right side of the curling iron because even though we're in the front, okay? It's about the side of the wig you're on that determines the direction of the curl. Okay, boom. I'm going to show y'all again. So, heat protecting spray. Doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo. It's kind of harder to use the flat iron in the front just because I don't know what it is, but I still kind of try my best. Okay, so we have the curling iron. See, the hair is still on the right side of the curling iron even though we're in the front, Okay. Nothing changes. We're just in the front. We're still on the same side. So it's the whole side, front to back, okay? So that's that. We're going to pin that curl. We're going to spray it on the inside and the out. I'm so mad that that whole video got deleted. I feel crazy. Ah. Now, when y'all are curling the front, remember, you cut layers, okay? So some of that hair is going to pop out of the curling iron. So be mindful and keep that curling iron up real close to the top so none of those layers fall out of the curling iron, okay? Be super mindful of that. It happens to me all the time, and I be so pissed because you don't want to miss getting the heat on those curls. You want everything to curl up. Okay. Hopefully, I do the other side and show y'all, like, what the heck? Okay, cool. Since I fumbled the bag on that side. Okay, so the curling iron, okay? Remember I said the curling iron always is in the same direction. And if you think about it, the curling iron is in the same direction. Because look, the curling iron is still poking out that way. But look at the hair. Look at the tail of the hair. Now that we're on the left side, you see the tail of that hair is on the left side of the curling iron. Okay, so that is how you curl when you're on the left side of the wig. I need y'all to really be mindful of that. That's so important, okay? And I'm going to show y'all again one more time. One more time. We do our little flat iron. Doo -dee -doo. Curling iron. Boom. Look at that. Look at that. The tail of that hair is coming out of the left side of that curling iron because why? We are on the left side, honey. We're on the left side. I need y'all to literally like paint that in your head. That needs to live in your head rent free so that you guys can really understand <clears throat> the concept of curling hair. It's super easy as long as you remember the direction. Boom. See that? See that? It's coming out that left shy, baby. But the curling iron still is facing in the same direction. We haven't, we didn't turn the curling iron to the other side. It's still in the same direction. Okay. So here we go. Now, when you guys take your curls out, make sure that they're falling on the side that you curled. You don't just want to take them out and they just fall in anywhere. The curls need to fall to the left and the curls need to fall to the right. That is law, okay? Because when you comb them out, you're going to be combing them out on specific sides. So be super mindful of that, okay? So I'm taking them out. This is my favorite part, y'all. So... Comb them out. When I comb out my curls, it's very important. I like to start from front to back. Sometimes I'll detangle with my hands or I'll detangle with a wide tooth comb. Okay, I always comb the curls front to back. Okay, I'm sorry, back to front, from the back to the front. And then when I comb them in the front, I just comb them into one another. Sometimes you are going to have to recurl because sometimes the curls fall. It's really weird, but I don't mind. I just recurl because I want to make sure my curl is shaped 
exactly how I need it to be, okay? So just be super mindful of that. It's okay to recurl. If you feel like your curls are not looking exactly how you want them to look, just recurl it. It ain't that big of a deal, baby. I recur I'm a recurling fool. I recurl all the darn time. I don't curl, okay? Boom. So now I'm going to comb them out. You see how I did back to front? Then when I got to the front, I just combed them into one another. But the top curls, I comb those back first. See? Comb them into each other. Comb them into each other. Comb th See how I'm combing them into one another? Once I, you know, comb them out, I just comb them into one another. That's it, and that's all. Then you can use hairspray to set your bangs, however you need them set. Um, sometimes I'll get the hot comb and kind of do my little one-two, woody doo 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 <laughs> And this is the finish, y'all. Um, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Please comment below and tell me what I can fix because I'm going to start doing voiceovers. I feel like you guys will love my voiceovers. And make sure you like, comment, share this post, and subscribe, honey.